Hi everyone, this is Rick here and welcome to Digital Fortress. In today's video, I'm going to go over navigating the Saturn network. And coincidentally, we just did a Cardano Effect podcast with the, with the Saturn network folks. There were some really good questions. And one of the questions was related to this video, which I'm doing as part two to my previous video, which was introduction to the Saturn network. Now the question that came up, which also segues into this video, was from a Reddit user, the Rebel in Black, who asks, how many forks does a Saturn network intend on having? I assume the team will have another fork in the future in order to use the Cardano protocol. Okay, and what this, what the uh, Reddit user, the Rebel in Black, is referring to is that there are two chains on the Saturn network. There's the Ethereum chain and the Ethereum Classic chain, which I will be demonstrating in this video. I'm gonna to stick to demonstrating on the Ethereum Classic chain because they work nearly identically but on the Ethereum Classic chain, I'm having a little bit lower gas fees and a little bit more um, speed responsiveness whenever I conduct the transactions that I've been practicing for this video. So you got two chains, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. On a completely decentralized exchange like the Saturn Network, you cannot trade from Ethereum to Ethereum Classic. You can't trade across the chains like that. You can trade between Ethereum and tokens that run on Ethereum, for example, like Xerox, Bitcoin, BAT, anything that's an ERC-20 token. Then on the Ethereum Classic, you can trade for Saturn and other ERC-223 tokens. So you have two chains, the Ethereum and the Ethereum Classic chain running on the Saturn network. You also have two types of tokens, ERC-20 and ERC-223. Both token types can run on both chains. It happens to be that on the Ethereum chain, it's been uh, running a lot of different tokens. It tends to run the ERC-20. On the Ethereum Classic chain, it runs mostly ERC-223 tokens. The difference between the two standards in ERC-20, there's a two-step process for a transaction to complete with uh, approving and, and then submitting. And with the Ethereum Classic chain, or basically with the ERC-223 tokens, which can be on either chain if they're developed to it, but in the case of the ERC-223, it's a one-step process, thus saving gas. And I'm seeing a little bit better performance. I don't know if that was the intention, but it just appears that way. Anyway, so let's take a look at the Saturn network on the computer here. And uh, what I'm going to do is start from the very beginning. In part one, I showed how to create a Saturn wallet. And in this part, I'm just going to launch and go through step-by-step step based on some things that I've observed on how to use the Saturn network. So I'm going to start by launching Chrome. Because the Saturn wallet, which I have shown up here, runs in Chrome and Firefox. And let me adjust my screen a little here to make sure you can see it properly. Okay, so I start off, I have my Saturn wallet in Chrome. And I'm going to go to the Saturn network. Now I'm on the Saturn network, and it interacts with the wallet. And Saturn network has night mode and day mode. I'm going to make sure I use day mode so it's a little bit easier to see this video. And I open up my wallet and log in. Now the first thing I want to do upon logging in, now this wallet interacts with the Saturn network and the Saturn network is completely decentralized. This web page is your viewport, your portal into looking at the network. And here in my wallet, I'm going to check a couple of things. I have the Ethereum network selected. These are the two forks that were in the question being asked by the Rebel in Black. Ethereum network and Ethereum Classic network. On my web page, I'm going to make sure I'm on the Ethereum assets part of the web page. If I go to the dashboard under Exchange, the dashboard will display the top five Ethereum Classic and the top five Ethereum assets. I'm going to go specifically to Ethereum assets and verify a few things. One is I'm on the Ethereum assets page. I have the Ethereum asset Ethereum logo shown up here on the top right. And in my Saturn wallet, I have the Ethereum network selected. Now, at this point, I'm ready to begin exchanging tokens or doing research. There's one thing uh, that I definitely want you to keep in mind, and that is do your own research. With this being a completely decentralized exchange, 
anybody can list anything on there. Anybody can do a pump and dump. So with, uh, with this great power comes great responsibility. That's some of the things I heard from guys like Neuron. Keep that in mind. And also from Sam, Magic Hat Sam. You have uh, a lot of freedom. And that freedom includes enough rope to hang yourself. So you got to do your own research. I'm going to show you how you can do that on the Saturn network because it is a very comprehensive, very well-designed, thorough network. So here I am back on Ethereum where I'm going to show you tokens you might be familiar with. Here's one, for example, 0x Bitcoin. This is a mineable ERC20 token. So I select 0x Bitcoin and I can buy. There's from here from the sell orders. There's no selling to buy orders, there's no buy orders on it. I have a chart to look at the trends and other information, buying and selling history down below. Over on the right hand side, there's a token info. This is where you begin your do your own research process. So for CRX Bitcoin, I can select token info and it opens up on the Saturn network. They've made the page available for information on CRX Bitcoin token. From here, I can select the Xerox Bitcoin link and it takes me to their web page and I can begin the research process by looking at what the developers have posted here and how I can mine, buy, sell, trade Xerox Bitcoin and which wallets I can store it in. Now, I happen to be using the Saturn wallet, which works uh, for this as well. And I also have a Trust Mobile wallet on my tablet. Now, that begins my research process. But anytime you're doing research, and again, I don't do financial advice on my channel. Uh, I'm not a certified financial advisor. But when it comes to doing research, the developers page is a good place to start. However, get out there on all the different resources such as Reddit and Telegram and Medium articles and look at different sources of information when researching a new token, especially on this type of exchange, because there's no third party uh, scrubbing these coins. So that's very important. So let's go back over to the Chrome browser here. There was an example of, of Xerox Bitcoin. Now I'm going to go back to the exchange, Ethereum assets, and I can search for other tokens. Now, not all tokens have both buy and sell trade listed. I can look up engine uh, wallet, which is a pretty good token. There are some for sale here. I can look it up. Uh, and here I can do a buy order. I can look up the uh, what's another one I see in here? There's the link token from Chainlink. But as you can see, you have the different uh, popular ERC20 tokens that are very available on the Ethereum blockchain here. You also got BAT listed and other popular ERC20s. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the Ethereum Classic network. So what I'm going to do is hit Ethereum Classic assets here. And notice I still have the Ethereum icon showing i'm going to switch it'll it'll change in a moment and i'm going to switch my network to the ethereum classic network and the page refreshes when i'm going to verify i have the green emerald green ethereum classic logo here i have my ethereum classic main network selected here and i have ethereum classic assets selected here which gives me my ethereum asset here so I have everything on the same page. It's very important that you do that. That way you make sure you're using the same tokens on the same blockchain and the same wallet. For future reference, let's say Tron or Stellar or Cardano comes on this network. I would imagine you would go up here. You would, you would switch to that particular chain, Tron, Cardano, Stellar. And from there, you would list, you would select the dashboard uh, and the assets those particular tokens. So onto the Ethereum Classic and the assets. I'm going to use this Bitcoin Classic token as an example only. Now there's other tokens on here like 1x, Titan, and a couple others that I've just picked up. So Bitcoin Classic, let's say I want to purchase that or I'm interested in that particular token. So I click on it and here I have buy orders, sell orders, or I can create my own order. If if I was looking to buy and there was no buy order that I wanted, I would create my own order from over here. If I wanted to sell this uh, Bitcoin Classic token, I would create that order from over here. Before I go into that, I wanted 
uh, look up information on the token by hitting token info. And it gives me amplifying information on the Saturn Network's web page here. And it tells me the website for Bitcoin Classic. And I select it. When I select it, I get this icon with a 13-day countdown timer on it. And there's no further information. So with crypto already being pretty high risk, I'm probably in even the high risk of the high risk category because I have known nothing about this token. So of course I could go out on Google and search for the Bitcoin Classic token, BTC, oh, BCT, which is very similar to BTC, not to be easily confused. So I didn't find much information on that token, but what I am gonna do is I'll use this as an example for the buying and selling and trading because the, manic, the, the mechanics uh, work the same and I should be able to do it relatively cheap. So I'm gonna go back to the exchange, make sure I have my Ethereum Classic assets selected. And BCT is right here at the top. So I'm going to use that one as the example. Then I select it and I've got three options. This is the key part. The three things I want to do. I either buy at the market rate because I want to buy it. Or I sell at some rate that I want to sell at. And I can create a new order. Whether it's a buy or sell order. So in this example, I'm going to buy one of these tokens right here. So I'm going to buy one BCT. And I type in one and let the math that runs in the background figure out how much, um, how much it's going to cost. Yeah, it calculates the mining reward. So I'm going to get some Saturn. There's going to be a fee involved. And how much do I want to buy this for? And I'm going to buy it for 0.00042. One BCT. The fee is 105, several decimal places. The total cost is going to be the 4.2 plus the cost of the transaction fee added to it. So I'm going to buy one BCT for a very small fraction of an Ethereum Classic and I hit buy. That places the transaction and this other window pops up. You set the gas price that you want to pay. I could lower this, but for the sake of brevity, I'm going to submit it and I have a stopwatch. So I'm going to hit the timer on my stopwatch to see how long it takes for this transaction to take place. Even though uh, I just got this little pop-up overlay that says your transaction has been submitted. So my stopwatch is counting. And what I'm waiting for is I'm watching for this transaction receipt to say succeeded right down here. And there you see it says success. That was a minute and seven seconds on a completely decentralized exchange. So you gotta keep that in mind. It doesn't have the speed of a centralized exchange in some cases. Now I can go back over to my wallet and see that what I should have showed you was how many BCT I had in there. But as you can see, I had 4544. Now I have 4545 in that wallet. So that was a buy transaction. Next, I'm going to do a sell transaction. Well, you can see here it decremented from 1499 to 1498 and I see over here there's a, a sell so on the right hand side somebody wants to buy at a, a very low price much lower than the sell order book over here so I'm gonna sell one BCT to that person I'll get rewarded with point zero zero four Saturn the fee is going to be .00004405 Ethereum Classic, and the actual cost is going to be the cost plus the fee. Then I hit sell. This window pops up again. I'm going to leave the gas price set to one and hit submit. And that will sell one very cheap BCT to that person. I'm going to hit start on my stopwatch. And that took a minute and six seconds, including my talk time there. So that was the whole elapsed time. And I'm going to go back to the exchange. And I did two of the processes there. So I did a buy and a sell. Now, the third thing I can do is create an order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an order. And when you create an order, you can create a buy or a sell order. So I'm going to create an order that is one ten thousandth of the price below so instead of a 42 i'm going to make it a 41. so i'm going to go in there and create an order 
cell 1 BCT, and the amount is going to be, and, and there's a nice reference. This is what I really like about the web page. Here's the top three cell orders. So if I want to sell under the next guy, and again, this is not financial advice. This is just showing you the mechanics. 0 0.123 zeros for 1. So I'm going to try to sell just under that price. Sign transaction. Submit transaction and start my stopwatch. The order succeeded. That took 58 seconds. Now I have my order shown over here on the right hand side. There's this little one indicator here showing that I have an order placed and I click on it and it shows there's my sell amount and I can go back to ETC assets, select BCT and I can see there's my sell order sitting at the top of the queue and the button here buy is grayed out. It says you can't execute your own order because that's coming out of my wallet. So that kind of makes sense. Next, I'm going to create a buy order. And the highest sell right now is still at 0 0.000162. So I'm going to create an order. And I want to buy. And the amount I want to buy is 1 BCT. And the price, again, nice little reference right over here. 0 0.000. 163. I'm just going to go one one hundred thousandths higher. Sign transaction. The create order window pops up. The overlay pops up. I'm going to use one GUI. Hit submit. Hit my stopwatch. And that transaction took a minute and four seconds. Now my orders has been updated. I select my orders on the right. And here I can say I have my buy at one and my sell at one here in the settings. And I go back to the Ethereum Classic Assets, select BCT, and there's my buy and sell orders. Again, the button's grayed out because I can't execute my own order, but that's how you use the exchange to sell one-on-one. -on -one. Pretty simple, and Ethereum works the same way. So back to the ETC Assets tab. You can look up the information. One thing I hadn't pointed out earlier is the type of token we're looking at whenever I hit the token info is these are ERC-223 tokens, which is the newer standard, higher than ERC-20, that um, has the one step by two steps in the process of the transaction actually occurring. Again, back to ETC assets, and I can look at each one of these tokens available. Um, there's two Saturns. There's one Saturn that runs on the Ethereum Classic chain. There's another Saturn that runs on the Ethereum chain. You can buy and sell those here. These give you ownership in the DAO. You have a 1x token here, just an example. The 1x token is a staking token. If I go to 1x.network, I can look up the information on how the staking process works with 1x. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it gives you more information. It has this thing where the coin ages uh, three days, staking begins to occur, and you get rewarded with more of those tokens. I'm not sure what the precise functionality is of the token once you acquire them. However, interesting concept. Okay, so back to the Ethereum Classic Assets. And there's other tokens such as Titan, which is a very rare token that's issued by uh, one particular, I'll go to token info, BitUnits. So BitUnits issues Titan and a couple other tokens on there as well. So that's basically how you can navigate the Saturn Network page here. And I used Ethereum Classic Assets as my primary. Although they're not as popular yet, they function just pretty much the same way as Ethereum. There's just a slight difference between the Ethereum Classic and the Ethereum Assets. Uh, you'll see there are some names like this one, this Doge Classic is probably what that stands for. It's not actually Doge. It's just someone created a variation of that, variations of weed coin and everything else. So... You can peruse through here and see what the different tokens are and research those. The key was I wanted to show you how to buy, sell, and trade. Now I'm going to switch back over to the Ethereum network. So I'm going to select Ethereum assets. Then under Ethereum assets, I'm also going to switch my wallet to the Ethereum network. Okay, and I'm going to verify three things. I'm on the Ethereum main network. I have the Ethereum icon here 
it's either black or purple, vice the emerald green color, and have Ethereum assets listed. And of course, down here I have my Ethereum assets down here. What I did earlier is I bought some Ethereum assets. I made some transactions. They're still paused because I set the gas price so low. I was doing practice transactions, but I set the gas price way too low for the Ethereum network because I got used to the Ethereum Classic network. So those transactions are still pending. So I got to remember to set the gas price higher. I don't know how long it will be until I get my Ethereum transactions complete, but the concept is the same as on the Ethereum Classic network. I'm back on the Ethereum Classic network. And one other thing I wanted to show you was how to cancel your orders. So here I have my two orders. I go in here and I select cancel order. This window pops up. No, you got to pay to cancel an order. It's a very small fee. Hit submit. I see the cancel order has been submitted and I hit my stopwatch. That order took 27 seconds to cancel. Now I'm going to cancel my sell order. Uh, one way, submit. Start my stopwatch. That took 56 seconds. So that's something to keep in mind. The reason I pointed that out and go back to my orders, all canceled, my trades, showing the trade completion, back to the dashboard. The reason I pointed that out was because if you get used to trading on a centralized exchange, you kind of get used to the very high speed action, depending on what exchange you're on. Just be alert to the delays in placing and canceling your orders when using a decentralized exchange. I'll be creating a part three of these videos, drilling into the information available via the Saturn network, where I'm gonna go into their forum and their blog, because there's a lot of information available in the forum and the blog. And uh, they also have Telegram and possibly a Reddit. I'm gonna have to check on and see if there's a Reddit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a little bit of work put um, making this thing. Uh, but I really do enjoy making these videos. So if you like the video, make sure you hit like and subscribe. Feel free to pass the video on to other people who really want to understand how a truly decentralized exchange works. There are other uh, networks out there, like Kyber Network is really cool. They've got a very nice web page. You have to uh, be aware, they do tokens changes um, at kind of like the atomic level, similar to what I showed here. Um, but just keep in mind that anytime you're you're going from chain to chain, such as Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and you're trading for Cardano or Bitcoin or Stellar or Tron or something like that, there's going to be a third party in the background that has to take control of your funds at some point. You are not going to have control of your funds, but when you are trading for tokens on the same chain, at that point, you always have control of your funds, as in this example with the Saturn network. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to hit like and subscribe. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.